Hello, my name is Alex Isles and welcome to Segedunum Roman Fort here in North Tyneside. And in this episode, we're going to have a quick look at some of the people who lived up here on Hadrian's Wall during the Roman period. So, so often we get caught up with the idea that the Romans were little Italian guys wearing red tunics and shiny armor and running up and down Hadrian's Wall fighting against naked Scotsmen with ginger hair. This is so historically inaccurate that I can't possibly begin to tell you all the wrong things about that, but I'm going to touch on a couple of those little factors right now. So right here in front of us, you can see this amazing depiction of Hadrian's Wall and the forts along it. And you can see different letters and colors along around every single one of the frontier forts and some of the forts that were north of the wall as well, such as you can see Burdens, Neverby, Brew Castle and High Rochester's and Risingham just up there, which were forts north of the wall, occupied for various periods of time, but gave us control, uh, the Romans were given control then, over the native British in those locations. But the reason why they're all in different colours is because of all of this over here. And this here shows the ethnicity and the cultures of those various different units. And the first unit you can see here are the Corvonai. And the Corvonai were stationed in modern day Newcastle and they're roughly on the Welsh border today. So they would be down, you can just see down here in this area of the British Isles right here. So they were there. Then you have a lot of different Spaniards. The Spaniards were famous for their cavalrymen. So you can see there's cohorts of Span Spaniards, Asturians, and Valadurian, uh, Valadurians all across the wall. Then you can see alongside that as well quite a few Gauls. So the third, fourth, fifth cohorts of Gauls, the Petria and the Alla Petriana, the first cohort of Litigonians, and the second cohort of Litigonians. Then you've got lots and lots of Belgians as well. So you've got first, second um, of Tungrians, the second and the sixth of Nervins. And then from that as well, you've got Batavians and Frisians. Then for the Germans, you've got the Kunganorum, you've got the Frisians, you've got Nervins again, Van Vanganorians, also pronounced as Wanganorums the Frisians again, and then I'm not even going to try and pronounce that particular unit's name, simply because there's far too many H's, N's and D's close together. Then you have troops from Rhaetia, which is Switzerland, uh, Dalmatians, which is today what we call Croatia, then Hungarians, Romanians, Bulgarians, Syrians. Uh, we have a unit of Syrian archers who were spread out across the wall, both at places like Kavonan and Hausteds. And then you've got Iraqis who were stationed at South Shields in an episode that I have covered a bit more in depth. You can have a look at some of their, uh, their site at Arbea. And then a unit of Moors who were stationed on the Cumbrian coast just over this area here. Oh, sorry, Borough on Sands. Borough by Sands. So you can see there's a lot of different ethnic groups and what the Romans would do is they'd recruit these guys as auxiliaries. They would be recruited from all over the empire, transported around to various parts because of their specialisms. So different peoples were famous for different things. The Gauls and the, well, some of the Gauls were famous for their heavy infantry and their cavalrymen. The Spanish were very much famous for their cavalrymen. Germans more famous for infantry alongside the Belgians as well. And then people like the Syrians were famous as archers. Uh, the Iraqis, they specifically took people off the Tigris River because they were Marines and they brought them all over here. So each one would have a different function on Hadrian's Wall. As they served 25 years here, they probably married or had girlfriends who then would have children with them. Those children would then probably join their father's unit. And over the centuries, that strong ethnic sense would transform. So you would go from having, let's say, a, a full unit of Germans to having a mix of Germans and Britons together. Or the Syrians, you might have someone whose grandfather was a Syrian, but he still served in the cohort of Hamatian archers on Hadrian's Wall even though he wasn't a full Syrian. Over the course of the Roman Empire, they probably tried to top up the units with people from their ethnic groups, but most of the recruitment would have probably been local to actually ensure that these would have fighting strength and ability. And so the ethnic groups who had those skills would pass on to the new recruits, and you would still get a very strong sense and capability right up here on the wall. 
but it really just shows you how when you're looking at Hadrian's Wall, so often we get caught up with the wall to, as it is, or we look at TV documentaries which show these uniform Roman soldiers wearing their red tunics and their shiny armor marching around the place. But in fact, it's a far more complex and more nuanced situation where you would have maybe a lot of ethnic clothing as well. For instance, at Bird Oswald Roman Fort, the troops stationed there, which are Dacians or Dacians, those guys from Romania, they were famous for a weapon called the Falx. And at Bird Oswald, they found a carved stone with a Falx carved into the stone there. It's kind of like a two-handed sword with a, 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 a scythe tip put on the end of it. And so they would have, that was a, very much an ethnic weapon that was associated with the Dacians, and it was carved into one of the stones above one of the gateways to the fort at Bird Oswald. So again, we see this connection between various different ethnic groups up here on Hadrian's Wall. I really hope you've enjoyed this video today and learned something about the different units on Hadrian's Wall, what their ethnicities were, and what they were responsible for along the line of the wall as well. If you've enjoyed the video, please do subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, like it and share it with your friends, and if you would be like to be involved with further um, creation of content in the future, please do support me on my Patreon, it helps no end. But other than that, stay safe and well, and I look forward to delivering another video for you in the near future.